What's up? It's Dylan here. Um, today I was thinking about a new name. I wonder if I, you may, let me know in the comments what you think, but I think I might go by DeFi Dylan. Uh, I got a domain picked out by that but my, as my crypto name. Um, kind of fun. Or uh, I have a couple other ones in mind, but DeFi, Decentralized Finance, it's a really um, cool area uh, in, in uh, the cryptocurrency world and uh, perhaps your world. Uh, coming soon so I can maybe do some more videos on that but uh, just kind of have a, a crypto username to kind of you know see how that goes you know right now I've been using Dylan M Bradley you know my M as uh, my initial and then um, you know my, my you know first and last name but saying that M part the M in the middle like is it N is it M uh, you know it's not as easy to say as, as something like DeFi Dylan right or something something a little bit simpler so you know, think about that. But this video is really about today is uh, why you should get paid in Bitcoin, but why you should never pay in Bitcoin. Okay, so um, let me repeat that so, so we're clear because it can be confusing. Why you should get paid in Bitcoin, but you should never pay in Bitcoin. So let me take you back to, uh, I, I don't have the full story, but let me take you back to when Bitcoin first came out. And one of the first transactions was people used Bitcoin to buy a pizza to show that you could, that someone would accept Bitcoin to buy a pizza. And I think today, like it was like 200 Bitcoins or so. I, I forget what it was because Bitcoins were like dirt cheap. If only we knew about them then, right? Maybe you're listening and you did. So uh, kudos to you, but also shame on you for not telling more people. But anyways, uh, it, it, the, I think the, the pizza is now worth a couple hundred thousand dollars or would be the Bitcoins for that pizza um, because the, it's appreciated in value so much. So... Uh, the principle of that, or the moral of that story, is Bitcoin is an, an asset that it appreciates in value over time. Okay, when you buy something, when you pay for something, what you're doing is is you are saying, I have this thing of value, and I want that thing of value that you have. You want the thing of value that I have, and so we're going to exchange those things of value. And because I'm better off by giving you my thing of value for your thing of value, and you're better off giving your thing of value for my thing of value. Okay. With money and things like that, or current, you know, current fiat money, it, it works fine because your dollar bill is going to be worth a dollar today, tomorrow, the next day, the next year, and so on. Um, at least, pay, you know, on on the surface, if you don't count inflation and stuff like that, um, then it becomes then that makes this more complex. So we're going to get there in just a second. Um, but with Bitcoin, Bitcoin appreciates in value. So your Bitcoin, if you want to buy a pizza today with Bitcoin. Um, you can use a Satoshi, right? Or a small, like a Bitcoin's cut up into, um, uh, it can be split, right? And, and, you, and you know the exact decimal places. So if you know that, let me know in the comments. But you don't have to buy a full Bitcoin, right? You can you can spend $10 worth of Bitcoin. Um, there are fees associated with it. It is an asset. You do get taxed when you do um, sell it. So you're essentially selling that Bitcoin to someone else. Um, but what you're also doing is you're you're trading an asset Right, that appreciates in value for a, a, a product, service, good, asset that doesn't appreciate in value. Okay, um, so if you buy a car with Bitcoin, if you buy a Tesla with Bitcoin, it's great for Tesla because then Tesla keeps getting more Bitcoin, which is an asset that appreciates in value, and they can do a whole lot of financial wizardry with that. Right, they don't need that thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand, sixty thousand um, dollars necessarily on hand. Right, they can use that and have that asset and borrow against that asset to pay their bills and to pay the, the labor costs for making that car uh, because they know the value of that Bitcoin is going to go up. Right? So they can do some voodoo there, which is stuff that you should learn about, uh, which is stuff that I will be talking more about on this channel. But anyways, the car, the value of that Tesla isn't going to go up with time. Right? Cars are one of the, the most expensive assets that depreciate. Right? They're one of the biggest traps for um, people trying to grow their wealth because you put a lot of money into them, but then you're not getting any money out. Sure, you get enjoyment, whatever, whatever out of it, but uh, you're spending a lot of money. So trading an asset that's appreciating like Bitcoin for an asset that's depreciating, that's going to depreciate in the future, isn't really a good deal for you unless you don't need the Bitcoin, unless you don't want that, right? Then, you know, all bets are off, right? If you really want that pizza, trade your Bitcoin for that pizza, but the pizza is going to be gone tomorrow. And, you know, you might have a stomach ache because you ate too much pizza. Um, I love pizza, but, you know, it's not, it's not necessarily the, the pinnacle of healthy foods. So that's why... You shouldn't ever pay for anything in Bitcoin, but you should try to get paid in Bitcoin. Because if you have goods and services that provide a value to someone, it's not up to you to tell them, you know, how they should pay necessarily, right? If they have something you value, right, 
then and it's an equal value at the time of which the goods and services are exchanged to, like it's cool like if they pay you in bitcoin right like you don't like because they may not even like bitcoin or they may not believe in bitcoin and it's like you're not necessarily manipulating them um you're just saying hey i would take bitcoin for that right and they're not coming to you for financial advice and it's not because it's not your business so like let's go back to the pizza example if you're selling pizza it's not your business to tell your customers that they should probably pay in cash over bitcoin right it's your business to allow them to pay for it however you accept payments so accepting payments in bitcoin and cryptocurrencies isn't a bad thing right um and it just you just should just know that when you accept those payments right you don't want to then go and spend those or you don't want to treat those as money because they're not classified as money right so if you're getting bitcoin you want to be like okay now i'm gonna put this in my savings every sale that comes in through bitcoin right that's not a sale that i'm going to then treat as cash right i'm going to treat that as that's going in my piggy bank right those are my piggy bank sales and just save that Bitcoin, build that asset, because that's how you're going to create generational wealth by doing that, something like that. If you believe that Bitcoin will appreciate. Now, if you don't believe Bitcoin's going to appreciate, well, there's a marketplace to sell your Bitcoin, right? You can go sell it on exchange. You can go sell it um, centralized exchange, decentralized exchange, sell it to your friends, right? You can throw it away. You can do whatever you want if you don't believe in it, right? That's why you can actually still buy Bitcoin today is because there's certain people that believe the price is going down, so they're going to sell. There's pretty people that believe the price is going up and they're coming to an agreement there. Okay, so I've rambled on a little bit, but the, the whole thing, and just to sum it all up, is you should get paid in Bitcoin if you have the option, if it works for you, works for your business, right? It's kind of a cool marketing quirk to say, hey, we take Bitcoin too, right? People are, if there's hype around it, people might, it, cause, it might cause them to come to your business when they, when they wouldn't have normally come in, right? And they may pay you in cash, which I don't think that's a problem if you get paid in cash right now because you can always convert it to Bitcoin and do things like that or use the cash to you know, pay for your expenses and stuff. So it's, you just don't want to be sitting on a pile of cash. So that's not bad, right? Um, but you just don't want to go out buying cryptocurrencies and then selling them immediately and paying for them, uh, paying for things in cryptocurrency, especially paying for things that appreciate in value. So the real thing I want you to take away from this is cryptocurrencies are assets. And because they're assets, you have to pay a capital gains tax when you buy uh, when you sell them on any gains. You can record losses if you buy Bitcoin for fifty five thousand, it goes down to fifty thousand, and you sell it. You can record those losses, um, but you don't want to be doing that with with assets a, a ton, right? Because that's extra cost, extra fees. You're not earning as much as you thought you would if you would just hold on to the asset. And every time you sell an asset that's appreciating in value or has a high probability of appreciating in value then you're losing out on all those potential gains, right? You're sacrificing future gains for current pleasure. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, go look up the marshmallow experiment and it'll tell you kind of a little bit, a little bit more details about on, on the study they conducted where they had kids, they gave them marshmallows and they said, you can wait and you get two marshmallows or you can eat the marshmallow now and you could eat the marshmallow now. You don't get anything, right? Um, so go, go look at the marshmallow study and let me know what you think about that. But it's kind of a similar thing. If you could hold on to your Bitcoin, hold on to your cryptos and treat it as building an asset portfolio as opposed to trying to get more money to use as a disposable income, then um, you might, I think you'll be better off. So uh, just to finish this off, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, like this content, subscribe to my Patreon. There'll be a link in the description below. Maybe I'll add a QR code. I saw someone do that up in this uh, the top right of this. Uh, let me know, uh, you know, what you thought. Let me know if you think. Let me know if you what you trade your Bitcoin for. It's like, you know, it's like uh, the commercial. What would you do for a Klondike bar? Well, what would you do for a Bitcoin, right? What would you do for some Bitcoin? What would you do for some crypto? Um, might be the new thing. So let me know. Like, subscribe to this video, and just think more on this, right? If you're trying to acquire, I guess I to put this disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't give investment advice. These are my opinions. It's just information. Um, but if you're trying to acquire cryptocurrencies, do you see them more as something to double, triple your money quickly and then spend that to acquire you know, goods that you want, right? Um, consumable goods? Do you see it as ways to invest in other assets that you believe are stronger than cryptocurrencies? Or do you, see, do you want to acquire cryptocurrencies so that you're building an asset portfolio that will appreciate over time for the future, right? What camp do you fall in? Do you fall across all of them? How do you view it? Maybe some cryptocurrencies you think are assets and other ones you think are just purely meant there to um, you know, gamble and speculate your money totally cool um just let me know let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear from you and uh yeah so that's it for today peace